55 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's name, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hearing of God's Word. who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, Do you need the arrow? and they shall not fear any no, longer, too many. or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading for this, the night Sunday after Pentecost, is Psalm 23, 
And let us read the familiar to many of us. In the Book of Common Prayer, it is found on page 476. We're going to read that second. King James Version. We'll sing, we'll pray this in unison. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou bearest the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The second lesson this morning is from Ephesians chapter 2. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
the same mark. Lord, you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Invite the children to follow us to the steps for the children's home. We speak together in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have you ever been on a long trip? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Carolyn's old. Yeah. New Hampshire, that's a long trip. Have you guys, have you girls been on a long trip before? Have you ever worked a long time? Yes. Put in a lot of work? When you get done with that trip or that work, what's the one thing that you want to do? Rest. Rest. Did you guys hear about that in our gospel? Yes. You don't want to rest? No. We have one kid that doesn't want to rest after a while. Feeling me small. <laughs> after a long bike ride, you'd want to rest? Yes. Well, does anybody remember what the disciples had been doing? They had just come back to Jesus. What had they been doing? Do you remember from a couple weeks ago? Remember, Jesus sent them out two by two. To go share the message. And now they've come back to Jesus. And they presumably walked, or maybe they rode a mule or a donkey or something. They're probably pretty tired, huh? You know what else has happened right before this reading? Anybody remember what happened last Sunday in the gospel? I don't think any of us were here last week, so I'll have to just tell you. King Herod beheaded John the Baptist. John the Baptist. You've heard of that, yeah? So John the Baptist was out telling people about Jesus, and what happened to him? He got killed for it. Yeah, and then somebody took his head. Yeah, they put his head on a platter. Yeah. So that was happening, and the disciples, have they just returned from a long trip telling people about Jesus? Do you think they might have been scared that the same thing that happened to John the Baptist might happen to them? So Jesus says, let's take a break. Doesn't that sound like a bit of good news to go off to a quiet spot for a break? And what happens? Were they able to get away to a quiet spot this morning? No. The people followed him. Don't they know the disciples and Jesus just want to rest after all the work and the trips they've been on? But what does Jesus do? We can kind of ex expect what the disciples probably thought. Ah, oh, I just want to break. But does Jesus do that? Does he feel that way? What does he do? He just teaches the people. He teaches the people. And he sees them as people without a shepherd. He sees these people without a leader. Because what's their leader doing? Or one of their leaders? King Herod, he's off chopping people's heads off and watching little girls dance in his court. Is that a good leader of the people? No. Mm -mm. Actually, we know that John said God cut off because we're we 
you heard that on the radio this morning. That's pretty amazing. That Caleb had the story of John the Baptist on this morning. This was before your parents got in the car, huh? Yeah. So there's this connection between what Jesus is doing. He's having compassion on people. And then we skip a whole bunch of the gospel. You probably didn't know this. But Jesus feeds 5,000 people. And Jesus walks on water. And then we have this ending about wherever they were, whether they were in towns or cities or marketplaces or farms, people were bringing the sick to him. Jesus loves to cook and feed people. That's right. Because Jesus is love, right? And he overflows with it. Now, before church this morning, Jesse asked me if I was going to talk about The Sandlot. You guys remember that movie we watched? Yes. Do you guys remember Benny the Jet Rodriguez? Yeah. How much did he love baseball? Uh, he his life was baseball, right? Yeah. The other kids, they watched the fireworks, and what did Benny want to do? He just wanted to keep on playing, right? Yeah, the ball didn't even make it over the fence, it rolled out. But what kind of leader was Benny? Did he exclude people from baseball, or did he include people? He included. How do you know he included people? Because he included Smalls. Smalls. The walk, who was Smalls for some of the adults who haven't seen the movie? Was he, he was new to the neighborhood. He moved in just at the end of the school year, right when summer started, so he had no chance to make any new friends. And has Smalls ever played baseball before? No. But his stepdad. His stepdad? What about his stepdad? Stepdad played a lot of baseball and got a baseball signed by Dave Reed. Yeah. But I thought it was interesting that when Smalls comes to town and he's the new kid, Benny, what does Benny do to show him that he's welcome on the baseball field? He invites him. He invites him. Yeah. And Smalls tries to get out of it. He's like, oh, my glove's broken. I can't go. Thanks and for asking. Gives him a new glove. Just don't worry about it. Here's a new glove. And a new hat, right? Because he had a silly hat, didn't he? Yeah, the hat was like a bear. It was a long, it was a fishing hat, I think. Yeah, his bill was three feet long. It was a three foot long bill. It'd be hard to play baseball in that hat. But I think Benny is a reminder of what kind of leader and shepherd yeah. that we want. But and it's a chance for you guys to do the same thing. Is it easy to maybe be like the disciples and want to break and do your own thing? Yeah, it was cool. No, he wasn't. He just invited Smalls on the baseball field because he knew Smalls wanted to play with them. And they became friends through baseball. So instead of making fun of someone who wasn't good yet, or excluding them, Benny, like Jesus, because he loves baseball so much, and Jesus loves us so much, that that love overflows into everybody he meets. And that's the love he calls us out to. He sends the disciples out to share that love, and he shares that love with us so that we can share it with others. If Amen. it wasn't for Benny, Smalls would not have made one friend that summer. That's right. He made a lot of friends. Here are your children's bulletins. I'm introducing everybody. They spit out their tongues when they said their names. Yeah. That's how the cool kids introduce themselves, huh? I'll let Jesse be the judge and if that Sandlot metaphor are connected with the gospel at all. But I'm wondering this morning, who are you responsible for? Does anybody rely on you for your for their existence, for their well-being? A couple things that come to my mind are my children. They depend on me a whole lot. The animals that live on our farm wouldn't survive without us. So who else could you be responsible for? I know that some of you find taking time off of work to be quite challenging because so much relies on you. In fact, it's like more work to prepare to leave. And then you get back and you have to clean up the messes that were made while you weren't there and catch up on your work. So sometimes it's easier just to say, that's not worth being away. So much 
I am responsible for. At our small church, many of you are responsible for the various areas of our shared ministry. Think of all the things that people are responsible for around here. There's bulletins, communications, worship leaders and servers. Who prepares and cleans up coffee hour every week? Who tends our grounds and who leads our outreach efforts? That's just a few things that all of us have responsibility for around here. Now these examples kind of highlight intentional responsibilities. We're not really surprised that we are responsible to our families, to our work, to our church. But other times we may take responsibility in a spur of moment kind of way. Consider when you meet someone who is in need. They may need something to eat or a place to stay. And you could direct them to the nearest social service agency to meet that need, or you could take personal responsibility to meet that need. So both our routine responsibilities and the ones that surprise us serve, us serve as a reminder that the modern myth that you are only responsible to and for yourself is just that, a myth of life that is independent and without a story. So I ask this question, who are you responsible for? Because three of our readings today, the Old Testament lesson in Jeremiah, Psalm 23, and the Gospel of Mark, all three of these talk about shepherds. Does anyone here know a shepherd? Was anyone here raised as a shepherd? I'm even a farmer and I can barely relate to the life of a shepherd. I have some friends who raise sheep, so it seems to me that our only connection to shepherds are distant and idealized stories. When asked what or who is a shepherd, can we answer with anything but an overly sentimental story with romantic and pastoral images? But if we fail to understand who shepherds are, we may fail to understand God and Jesus as well. We cannot relate to sheep how else do we understand ourselves as the people, the sheep of God? The images of shepherd and sheep abound all over the Bible. Abel was the first shepherd, and he was murdered by his brother Cain, the farmer. Abraham, Moses, David, all shepherds. The first people to witness the birth of Jesus, shepherds. There's something essential about our relationships with God and each other that involve this image of shepherd and sheep. But how do we understand this image? We don't have our own flocks and pastoral landscapes to relate to. And with a bishop's annual visit, and he comes with his crozier or shepherd's crook, perhaps a good place to start to thinking about how we relate to shepherds is who are we responsible for? Who are shepherds responsible for? Their flocks. So lest we are tempted to think of shepherds only in a positive, romantic light, the prophet Jeremiah warns, Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. The kings of Israel, who Jeremiah refers to as shepherds, have scattered their people, driven them away, have not cared for them. There's isn't even the upcoming election we're talking about. Leaders have been driving people apart for a long, long time. But the Lord promises to attend to them for their wickedness and to bring his sheep back into the fold. Shepherds are capable of much compassion and responsibility as well as much destruction and separation. Even the shepherd boy David, once he becomes king, takes another man's wife and has the husband killed. It's a reminder that shepherds have the potential to act for good or for evil on behalf of their people. So how do we act on behalf of those who we are responsible for? I'm a half-time vicar, and I'm also a farmer, and I spend quite a bit of time around my children at home and in the farm. Often I can find myself busy with the chores of the day, and perhaps we're doing some 
arduous work of setting up a temporary fence through the woods so our pigs have a place to graze, or we're just tackling the routine jobs of dishes and dirty laundry, or we're loading up to go get meat from the processor. And very often, probably more often than I'd like to admit, these can be moments where I finally let myself get worn down to the point where anything could make me snap. Maybe some of you can relate to these kind of experiences. And my boys will give me a look like they know they're evaluating my response as their shepherd. Will I provide a moment of care and attention that allows little things to remain little things? Or in that moment, will I crush them with my hot-headedness and create some distance between us? Many of you as parents know that the work of the shepherd, particularly with children, is never finished, it's never easy, and it's never without responsibility. So where are the areas of those relationships that you shepherd where you could potentially destroy and scatter the sheep? Is it in a business deal that takes advantage of someone else? Is it in a loss of self-control that will estrange you from someone in your family? Being a shepherd to others is challenging work. And if we seek to do the shepherding all by ourselves, we will ultimately shepherd no differently than the unfaithful kings of Israel, destroying and scattering the sheep. Now, while there is potential to destroy and scatter, Jesus brings peace and unity. At one time, we Gentiles were without Christ, aliens from Israel and strangers to God's covenant. We were without hope and without God. And Paul tells the Ephesians that now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. And in his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall. The work of Jesus, completed through his own body and blood, unites us all to God and each other. We've been gathered together into God's fold, made citizens with the saints and members of the household of God by the shepherd who never fails his sheep. There can be no peace and unity without the work of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. So in our own shepherding, there can be no peace and unity without Jesus. And this brings us to the heart of our condition. In order to shepherd others well, we must acknowledge that we ourselves are also sheep. If we expect unity and peace, we must be able to confess that we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. You remember, might remember that line from morning prayer. I do remember to, it. Thank you. <laughs> we'll make the adult sermon interactive as well. <laughs> Today's colic calls attention to our weakness. We prayed this at the beginning of the service. We mercifully receive from God our necessities that we for our unworthiness dare not, and for our blindness cannot ask. As people of God's pasture and sheep of his hand, we must submit to our shepherd. And Jesus, our shepherd, models this for us in his submission to the Father. <coughs> Remember this prayer from the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Or consider Jesus' words, not my will, but yours be done. In Jesus, all is restored. Everything is made new. All is joined together through him in the spirit to the Father. In Jesus, the way of the sheep is the way of life. And as Jesus gives his life for his sheep, we also can give our life for others. We no longer are destined to destroy and scatter because through Christ we can have compassion on each other. By confessing our own sins, we can forgive the sins of others. And when we are returned to the fold of God, we may join in that prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. Amen.
Standing, let us affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God who not made, of one being with the Father, the freedom of all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and his Son. With the Father and his Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge on baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Meetings in Form 3, found in the Book of Common Prayer, page 387. Father, we pray for your own Catholic Church. That we may all be one. one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your, your name, name may be glorified by all the people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they, they may be delivered, delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May, may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Turn to our prayer list in the morning. Today we pray for J.C. Griffin, Stacy Marks, Jim Jeffries, Brendan Signor, Joy and Parker Fortoy, Shane Fortoy, Danny Thomas, Danny Whitted, Adrian, and Carwell. And we also pray for Bishop Michael Curry. The Reverend Gabe Lazarus, Anna Holt, Suzanne Simmons, the Reverend Dr. John Wall, Laura Hammonds, and Carla McCray. The Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we want you to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and my sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. you. And also with you. And also with you. Preserve those who travel, in particular Mary. Surround her with your loving care, protect her from every danger, and bring her in safety to her journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. See you in September. <laughs> Love that song. A few comments about Holy Communion. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive in the Episcopal Church. If you do not wish to receive, you're still welcome to come down for a blessing, and you indicate that by crossing your arms. If you're in need of a gluten-free wafer, the signal for that is palms down. Um, we receive beginning on the lectern side, from front to back, followed by the pulpit side, front to back. Our offertory hymn is 440. Four. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Amen.
Thanksgiving on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And make us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and ever and ever. Amen.
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your son, Savior of Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated for the parish announcements. Good morning and welcome. I'm Father Joe Stroka, the vicar here. If you're new and I haven't had a chance to meet you, I'd love to meet you at the doors after the service. Also after the service is our fellowship and coffee hour. Nancy's done a great job and has a great spread out there. So, Andrew. And as well as Andrew, they tag team this one. So please come and we, don't, we want them to go home empty handed. So come and eat and, and have some fellowship together. We had a great uh, summer fun series on Wednesday night. We watched Sandlot together here in the parish hall. Thanks to everyone who made that happen, particularly to Tom who brought all the AV equipment. We've got a little baseball theme going uh, this summer. We went to a ball game. We watched a ball game. Um, we talked about doing something outdoors in August. So maybe we have a cool night. We can have a pickup ball game in the back lot or something and grill out and invite the neighbors. That maybe. Let me know if you're up for that during coffee hour. Also during coffee hour, if uh, you'll stop in and see Jonathan Warren, he's collecting anniversaries and birthdays. Um, we'd love to have these on file with the church. Um, but we'd also like to begin celebrating these and including them in the bulletin. So if you have not seen Jonathan yet, please share that information with him. We won't give out your age. Um, that'll be up to you to decide uh, if you want to share that information. But we would like to know um, what's going on in your life so that we can pray and celebrate when you reach these milestones. Are there any other announcements from the group? Susan. a server, these ministers who worship here, if you're one of those people, please shoot me an email of unavailable dates for the next three months, because I want to start and have them ready in the next week. So, thank you. Yeah, grateful to all our servers. Be in touch with Susan uh, to get on the road up for the next quarter. Please stand for your blessing. Yeah. Jesse, Jesse has an announcement. Oh, 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 oh. I just want to uh, bring your attention to uh, the announcement in the back of the book, back of the bulletin, uh, concerning the Polly Murray commemorative service uh, this Wednesday at six o'clock at St. Titus's in Durham. Uh, she was a very influential Episcopal priest, did a lot of work here in North Carolina, and uh, each year the diocese uh, commemorates and celebrates her life. So that's this Wednesday, uh, July twenty fourth. Six o'clock at St. Titus's in Durham. Thank you. Did you say more about Holly Murray? Why, why this is so fabulous? Uh, she, she did a lot of civil rights work. Um, and I think she was pretty much a, is Polly Lott a, a, the correct term? She, she was more like a renaissance woman. She was just, um, she, I did a lot of work in a lot of areas. Uh, she, and I say she was a big a civil rights kind of dragging people here in North Carolina toward that, so. Ordained, uh, ordained minister. Yeah, she was an Episcopal priest. Um, and something else major. Uh, she was also a lawyer, so she that's you know, held together the divine and the profane very well. <laughs> so we will be celebrating her life this Wednesday. And from Durham, she's from Durham. Please stand for your blessing. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.